I've heard it a million times. Why would you backpack? Why would you put yourself through that? And especially in the winter. I know winter camping scares a lot of people. It's cold, difficult to hike. Have I had some miserable nights? Yes. Have I wished I was home in my nice warm bed? Of course. But if you have the right gear for the right situations, it's bearable. Unless you can't make fire. Or you run out of water when everything is frozen. So that's the one thing that always makes me a little nervous. It's that in the winter, fire and water are never easy to come by. So I got a hold of my good friend, an expert at finding water and making fire in difficult situations. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is actually my good friend, Gordon, who is a survival expert slash cinematographer. Say hi. What's up? So Gordon is actually one of the people uh, that I started backpacking with. How long ago was that? Oh man, a few years maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's I been a while. It's been several years yeah. since we hung out. He actually taught me hammock camping when I was a hammock camper. Today we're gonna talk through just some simple tips about what you guys can do to maybe make your uh, winter camping trip a little bit better. Gordon actually taught survival school, so. Uh, yeah. That's right. What did you do? What I, I, taught, I taught kids survival skills out in the wilderness, like you know how to not die. Didn't you tell me that one of your, your uh, graduating classes was to go into the wilderness with nothing but a knife for like a week? Yeah, oh yeah. Is that true, like oh, totally yeah. real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not necessarily gonna talk survival, we're gonna talk backpacking stuff, but um, it's nice to have him here because he's gonna be able to at least share a few tips on kind of what you could do if things maybe go south a little bit. It's actually lunchtime right now, and because it's lunchtime, we're gonna need to get some water. Yeah. Um, now, one of the things that we talked about is if you were out here and we walked right past a water pump on the way in here, and what if you were at a water pump like this one where it didn't work and you were counting on that to work and now you're out here and you're like, how do I get water to cook or boil or drink or whatever? And Gordon's gonna kind of walk through a little bit about what we can do to make sure that we do that safely because Look at this, there's a lot of mud, a lot of debris. Uh, there's obviously been something here. <laughs> and there's just lots of things around that we wanna be making sure that we uh, are safe. Uh, why wouldn't you just want to drink the snow? Why wouldn't you wanna just drink snow? Would we wanna drink snow? It's easy, you just pick it up, eat it, it's like a popsicle. The problem is, is that it's gonna lower your core body temperature and you could get hypothermia. Um, having lived through uh, having hypothermia, uh, it's, it's not, a, not a cool thing. So what we want to do is we want to get the snow from a clean source and then warm it up so that it doesn't lower our body temperature. Okay, so how are we going to do that if, um, if it looks like this, where there's literally debris, I mean like <laughs> yellow snow, um, it just doesn't look safe. What are we going to do? What, what would be the first thing that you would think of? Yeah, the first thing I think of is this is a high traffic area. Let's just take a walk behind here and try to find a clean area. Uh, I want to look up and just make sure there's nothing, you know, like a bird's nest or something above us that's uh, going to create some toxic situation for us. So like this would probably not be an ideal location, although it looks clean. There's a lot of like holes in the ground here and that's from uh, debris falling from the trees. So what we want to do is look for a gap in the trees to where the snow is falling straight, straight from the sky, right? Um, so if it's falling straight from the sky, it's going to be a lot cleaner. So I mean, you can even take it from like a log like this where it's, there's nothing above it. Get it in a bucket. Get it in your, in your pot and we'll, we'll melt it down. But we're not just gonna get snow the normal way, we're gonna do it the cinematic way.
That was a pretty cool way to get water, uh, but I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah, yeah. I think we should eat. Are you, are you making a spoon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I travel light. I've had this knife since I was like 13. 13, okay. Um, yeah, and I, this, I've, I've had to slaughter a lot of rabbits with this knife because we used to raise rabbits. And, um, and then on survival trips, we'd take rabbits with us to teach kids how to properly dispatch an animal uh, humanely and uh, butcher it so you can eat it. So, yeah. Kind of creepy. It's a little macabre. That, that's why. This is why I just bring the freeze dried meals, <laughs> so I don't have to slaughter a rabbit. By the way, uh, this company, uh, Pinnacle Foods, sent me a whole bunch of these uh, freeze dried. Are these freeze dried or are these dehydrated? These are freeze dried. Um, and I had my first one when I was in the Smoky Mountains. And these are really, really good. So shout out to Pinnacle Foods. Thanks you guys for uh, sending me all this cool stuff. You know what's funny? is that I just realized I brought the Human Gear Duo <laughs> spoon, so I totally could have given you a spoon. Is that it, extra flavor? It is way cooler <laughs> that you are using the, uh, <laughs> the spatula that you whittled. Okay, so while I got here, I think we should do one more, like, kind of quick, um, you know, what-if scenario. Yeah. So now um, it's... Like we're wanting to start a fire. Let's say we want to start a fire and obviously this is not ideal. And uh, you know, it's obviously got some snow in there. Uh, the ground is actually wet because it's above freezing right now. It's supposed to dip below freezing tonight. And uh, a lot of the wood around here has been either picked clean or it's just soaking wet. So what would we do in a situation like this winter if we're looking for firewood and we're kind of Stuck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not like you can just grab your pocket saw and take down a, a dead tree. You know, it's like not a good use of your energy. So what we want to do is we want to try to find some dry tinder and dry wood in a close vicinity to where we're actually making camp. Okay, so this is a good example of something that might be dry. You've got a log here that's been sheltered, uh, sheltering what's underneath it. So if we, if we pull this back, um, you can find some, this is pretty dry right now. Uh, we want to find some of these dry leaves and just put those in our pocket carry it back to the site. Yeah, so here's another example. There's some pretty dry stuff right underneath here. You can pull this out. This is gonna catch a lot faster than any of the wet stuff from around it, so. It's another good log over here. Get up underneath here. Pull some of the dry stuff out. And there's even like dry bark right underneath here. See, this is wet here, but this is perfectly dry. Take that with us. Again, this is like really close to base camp. You don't want to be like burning a whole lot of calories, working really hard to pull this stuff out of trees or off the ground. So just find the easy stuff. You actually showed me this uh, a long time ago um, about like if there is um, like a dead sapling mm. or smaller trees that are still standing and you can actually just push them right over. Yeah, totally. Make like a bear and just push them over, you know, yep. snap. Uh, or even like something like this is just hanging out. It's a piece of dead limb in a tree over here. We can just shake that out of it. So this is a good example of, you don't want to do something unsafe either. You want to injure yourself out here. Like that could fall and bean me in the head. Um, whereas this piece right here is at waist level. Wait, I'm going to take that back with me to camp because it's been sitting out uh, keeping it's pretty dry on the underside here so I could shave some of this off make a fuzz stick out of it get some tinder I already know what a lot of you guys are thinking why don't we just use birch bark I don't see too many birch trees yeah. around here there might be a few but you can always do that too and birch am I right on this burns even when it's wet yeah that's right so it's kind of it's got some oil in it that uh, um, I don't know the exact science of it, but yeah, it, when it's moist or wet, you can still get it to catch. So Very cool. Okay, so Gordon, we probably could have just used the uh, firewood that somebody already left for us there, yeah, but sure. that's okay. Anyway, I hope those tips were helpful to you guys. And uh, so I think what we're going to do now is uh, camp. So I got my tent set up. Uh, we're going to get a fire going, and uh, it's going to get dark pretty soon. And uh, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one.